How long are we supposed to go on like this, Jerry? I'm trying my best. We've already missed Coronation Street. Well, every cloud, as they say. I've warned you before, Jerry. You say another bad word about Coronation Street and you may leave this house and never return. Don't forget your waterproof trousers. You nearly bloody bankrupted us. Do the Protestants have to bring waterproof trousers? Or will the Catholics be expected to do all the dirty work? Not dirty work, it's an outdoor pursuits weekend. Thought you said you were building bridges. Not real bridges, Mommy. Metaphorical bridges. Then why can't you wear metaphorical trousers? What do you think you're playing at? Where's your blazer? I've decided to put my own spin on the uniform this year. I'll spin you across that floor, get your blazer on. Look, Mommy, I'm not a clone. I should be allowed to express my individuality. I'm sorry, I'm not wearing my blazer. End of story. Jerry, pass me the wooden spoon. What, do you think I'm holding out on you? Oh, I don't know what to believe. Listen, I've plenty of colours. You're welcome to my colours. I'm not interested in your colours, Sarah. It's darks I need. Oh, listen, Dad. Do not be starting me about darks, Mary. I've given you whatever darks I have. Stick on a half load, me don't want a woman. A half load goes against everything I stand for. You know that, Dad. Step into your trust fund, of course. No bother at all. Passes in the phone. I just need to ring the bank. <laughs> Seven six five four three two one. That's the account number and the password. What is it again? What was it now? Oh, why? Catch your cell phone. Mary, look. Your family. Well, you're good people. Well, you're decent people. But I have to set an example. No, dear God, no. You're not talking about a ban. Yes. Let's call it a suspension. What do you expect me to do on a Friday, Finola? Cook? You expect me to cook? You can order pizza. Pizza is not as nice. No, you are right. Orla, pizza's not as nice. Maybe you should have all thought about that. Less than Mary, I understand. I mean, he's my nephew and even I find it hard to get past. If I'm totally honest, there's times when I look at him and I feel, well, it's pure hatred. I'll not dress it up. No, no, it's not the English thing. Hope to God it's not the gay thing you're offended by. There is no gay thing. Because I'd be disappointed in you, Mary. I'll not lie. Of course not. I mean, if anything, the gay thing sort of cancels out the English thing. She's gone too far this time, Mommy. I mean, what next? We'll catch her trying on my knickers. Don't say knickers in front of your father. He can't cope. I can't cope. Sure, what's a pair of knickers between cousins? Last of the knickers. <laughs> Sweet. Jesus. Mommy, we can make a play. Not the Christmas cupboard. I've had the very tonics, Mary. Animals, a lot of you. We needed energy for our poetry. I give you energy for your poetry. We were just going to take a handful of chocolate money, Mary, but then one thing led to another. What am I supposed to do? I'll have to start from scratch now. And December's only round the corner. It's eight months away, love. Something trouble in you, Brady? Oh, you could say that. My Yemen has been waiting all night for this song. Really? But your girls pushed him out of the line, and now he has a bruise. Show them the bruise, Eamon. Aye, bruise quite easily. It's not the point. Right, I see. Well, I'm sorry about that, Eamon. Is that all you have to say? I'm not sure what else there is to say, Brady, except maybe our girls are 16 and Eamon's a 50-year-old man. What happened to Toto? It's just hit me so hard. And I'm worried it might affect my performance. Oh, come here, love. Look, if you fail the exam, I promise you, there'll be a nice wee plot out there with your name on it. It's Uncle Colin. Well, I'm not taking it. I've been stung once already this week. And aren't 45 minutes talking about his new shoelaces? You are lying, Aaron, so help me, Jesus. I'm not lying. Swear. Swear on Dolly. Orla saw too. Orla's easily laid. Oh, thank you, Aunt Mary. They were my birthday photos, for God's sake. There's definite grounds for an annulment here, Mary. I mean, you only turned 33 once. I've been 33 a few times now, in fairness, Mary. Well, aren't you a brave man, given the circumstances? Mary, come on. Would you not reconsider? No, dear. Please, love. Just the once. I'm not letting you hit him, dear. I won't put up with it anymore. Teenagers have rights now, you know. Don't be ridiculous. This is the truth, Mommy. Aaron, if you expect me to believe that Michelle tripped, why carrying a scent of candle? You must think I come up the foil in a bubble. What the fuck's going on here exactly? Okay. Um, all right. Well, what happened was, Michelle was carrying the scent of candle. Sure, Macaulay Coco might be divorcing his parents. Do you hear this? This'll be someone she met at that stupid summer scheme you insist that we send her on. A bloody friends across the barricades thing. I have nothing against Protestants. I'm all for integration, I am. 
But if they're letting their wains divorce them? McCoy Cogan isn't a Protestant, ma. It's only going to give our wains ideas. Well, you might be. But I didn't mean him at friends across the park. I don't care where you met him. You're not to see him again, understood? Fine. Oh, my mum, I said to tell you. Her big bowl. I know, I know. I keep forgetting. I'll drop it round today. No, she said to hang on to it. What? She doesn't want her big bowl back. But why? There's nothing wrong with that bowl. She sure, was admiring that bowl only yesterday. It's a grand bowl. I'm just a messenger, folks. Hey. My mother rang. Why is everything OK? Oh, she was very distressed. She wanted me to pass on a message. And are you going to? Oh, fine. Um, <clears throat> uh, Aaron, I need some information. Can you find out in a subtle way if Michelle's mother was given the big bowl by someone she has since fallen out with and if she can no longer bring herself to look at the big bowl because it's just too painful, all the best, your mother, Mary. Great. Great. Thanks very much, Deidre. Well, that got to the bottom of it, all right. She Harkin was telling me you were in Duggan's bakery yesterday lunchtime. Well, that's hardly news. <laughs> Two buns, he says, you ordered. No, well, I often do. An apple turnover and a cream horn. A cream horn? That's not like you, Grandma. Sure, you couldn't pay you to eat a cream horn. Cream finger it was. I will turn over a cream finger. Cream horn, Shay said. Horns, fingers, who cares? He swore on it, said he saw it being bagged up. And big Shay's eyes like a hawk, so he does. Shay said when you left Duggins, you turned up Pump Street. Pump Street? Who do you know on Pump Street, Dad? What were you doing heading up Pump Street with a cream horn, Dad? I was visiting a friend of mine. What friend? A new friend. A male friend, was it? I, I thought as much. Buying cream horns for his fancy woman, Sarah, what do you think of that? We met at the Stations of the Cross. Which station? Jesus falls for a second time. I could do without the details, Dan. Maeve and me, we're... we just get on well, that's all. Maeve? That's her name, is it? Yes, that's right. Maeve? That's what she's called, is she? She is, aye. Maeve? Maeve? Really? Maeve? Why does your mother make that sound? I cannot believe this. I think it's a good thing, love. I'll just keep out of it, you. And that's who you were winking at in mass? Winking? Mm -hmm. At your age? Christ, I feel sick. It was only a friendly wink. There is no such thing as a friendly wink. Is there not? Our poor mother is barely cold. And you're straight back out there, winking away. Your mother's been dead ten years, Mary. Look, I'll not tell you again. I'm sorry. I seem to have lost my appetite. You happy now? 